Buenas tardes, amigos de, de Académicas. Bienvenidos a INSTAR. Esta tarde, en el marco del taller de transiciones políticas y revoluciones que estamos desarrollando de manera conjunta con Gobierno y Análisis Político, GAPAC, eh, estaremos abordando el segundo encuentro de este eh, tema número uno sobre las consideraciones teóricas eh, de, las, de los ciclos transicionales y de las revoluciones. Para ello, hoy estaremos abundando en la importancia de la sociedad civil. Nos acompaña el doctor John King, quien es uno de los principales estudiosos del tema a nivel mundial. El profesor King estudió eh, su eh, formación de grado en la Universidad de Adelaida. En la actualidad es profesor en la Universidad de Sydney. Pero para esbozar y para darle la bienvenida a, a INSTAR y a GAPAC a este espacio de debate, y reflexión cívico y académico, eh, le doy la oportunidad a mi colega, el doctor Armando Chaguaceda, para que pueda presentar como se debe al doctor King. Welcome, eh, doctor King, a Twin Star. Eh, Armando. Oh, oh yes, it's a, thank you, Leonardo. Thank you, John. Thank you, it's a pleasure to again have to John House. The, the, the previous one years ago, and was a sad, and after that, we were in of imperial. Mm -hmm. The John is for the and the, for the civil. I remember 20 years ago, one university, one seminal books, Democracia y Sociedad Civil and Civil Society, that he wrote, I, I think, that 1992. And for me, it was very important to discover this work, but uh, John has another important uh, parts of his research. John studied with Steve McPherson, that is a political theorist, liberal democracy, but from the socialist democratic uh, world. John has developed a, a biography, for example, he has a, a, an important bio of Buckley Cavell, and At the same time, for me, is the most um, innovative theory about democracy because it uh, has been in a book, uh, Life and Death of Democracy, in the short story of democracy that has been Spanish. And as you can see, John is a political theorist, but it's a, it's a global citizenship. It's a progressive, a true progressive, no a, a far left. Uh, fake progressive, true progressive, um, citizen, a public intellectual, and is a friend of INSTAR, is a friend of Capar, and is a friend of us. And no more words. Uh, the floor is yours. And gracias, John. Well, muchas gracias, uh, Leonardo and uh, Armando. Buenas tardes a todas. Uh, me alegra estar aquí hoy. I'm very glad and happy to be with you. Muchos saludos desde Sydney. Uh, warmest greetings from Sydney, where it is morning uh, and it is the next day, which goes to show that time and space are uh, contingent and relative. Uh, I'm very glad to be with. Uh, you as uh, mercenaries of imperialism. I, this was new for me. Whether I'm a true progressive or not, uh, well, we are going to, to, to find out. Thank you uh, very much. Muchas gracias to the Hannah Arendt uh, Institute uh, and also for the medium of INSTAR, for the interpreter, and uh, for all of you for coming. Uh, in this topic of Sociedad Civil, 
Of course, context really matters. And I am aware that um, many of you are somehow in the, let's say, Caribbean region. Uh, and I am somehow informed, I have some understanding of your circumstances. Some of you painfully are in involuntary exile. There are many who want in this period to emigrate. There is talk of a brain drain. There are foreign government sanctions on Cuba. There are electricity uh, blackouts. Uh, there is deepening poverty. There are food shortages. There is police harassment and prison sentences. And I understand that there is uh, quite a lot of hopelessness and even outright despair. This is the context in which I'd like to make some general uh, remarks about a topic uh, on which I've probably worked for most of my life. Uh, it's been a long life and uh, it is a topic that goes back uh, nearly half a century. What I would like to do is to, in a way, paraphrase uh, to summarize some of the key points in the essay, which I think Leonardo and Armando circulated. Uh, it's an Espanol translation of an essay, which is an, uh, a, a reflection about the last four decades of reception of uh, the language of uh, Sociedad Civil, uh, the politics of, of civil society and other matters. What I want to do uh, is to break up my contribution into two parts. First, uh, for about probably uh, 20 minutes or less, I want to begin by talking about, first of all, the renaissance of interest globally in the topic of Sociedad. Civil. I want to talk about the revival of an old term, uh, the way that it spread to virtually every continent for the first time during the last four or four and a half decades. I want to say something, uh, secondly, uh, about the contested meanings of this term. It's very important uh, that this signifier, this phrase, uh, which causes controversy, it's important that we be clear about uh, its, its meaning. And um, before I break, perhaps I want to say a few things about why is it that there was a renaissance of interest or has been a renaissance of interest in Sociedad Civil during the last several decades. Let me begin. There was a time, uh, believe it or not, when this phrase, civil society, um, meant almost nothing to most people. Uh, I can recall uh, in the 1970s, the very late 1970s and the very early years of the 1980s, that um, when describing the research and writing that I was doing on civil society, uh, people would frown. It was like, what is this? Uh, what do these words mean? It's true that there were historians uh, in the field of intellectual life who specialized in the older meanings of uh, civil society. Once upon a time, civil society in European languages meant uh, a well-governed polity of laws. It's strange for us, but this is the way, for example, in which Thomas Hobbes, in his classic work, The Leviathan, written during the English Civil War, this is the way that, that Hobbes understood civil society a polity, a political system where there are general laws, uh, where there is um, limited or no violence, where there is order and stability. 
this is a civil society. This is very, this is very uh, strange. And, and it's also true, perhaps someone can turn off their camera. Uh, and it's also true, as an exception, that there was a certain uh, Antonio Gramsci tradition. So, for example, in uh, Spanish America, uh, throughout the, the continent, and also in Japan, there was in the 1960s, particularly, the usage of Gramsci's understanding of uh, uh, civil society, by which was meant non-governmental institutions are in a bourgeois society uh, where the ruling class uh, colonizes that civil society. It creates its hegemony, as Gramsci put it, and the political struggle, according to Gramsci, uh, is, as you know, probably uh, is the building of a counter uh, Sociedad Civil to prepare the transition to a future communist society. So these, uh, the, the, the phrase itself was not entirely uh, forgotten. It had a strange old meaning and it had a Gramscian meaning. I would say around 1980, there is a transition. There is a renaissance of interest in this uh, topic of civil society. Uh, and while it continued to have contested meanings, as I will try to explain uh, in the course of this uh, lecture, it underwent um, a, a, a flourishing, a rebirth, but with new uh, meanings. It became a kind of weaponized phrase, especially in the hands of citizens resisting arbitrary state power. That was true, for example, as much in Brazil as in Chile, as it was in uh, China, in Turkey, in Russia, uh, the Islamic world, and of course in Central and Eastern Europe before the so-called Velvet Revolutions of 1989 to 1991. It was in these contexts that there was a rebirth, uh, a transformation of, uh, of meaning of this uh, civil society. What did it mean? I would say that uh, to generalize, the, the common uh, understanding of Sociedad Civil in this period, and it continues to be the common understanding, is that it's a phrase that refers to the non-governmental domains of life. To, uh, as Ralph Darendorf, the German sociologist famously put it, to the creative chaos of social institutions, a plurality of social institutions that function at a distance from uh, the hands, uh, the power of governmental state institutions. So a civil society is a non-governmental uh, space of networks, of institutions, of, of mobilizations, of people living their everyday lives. And they do so, according to this definition, non-violently. Uh, the, the, the connotations of sociedad civil, the civil is very important. Uh, a civil society, when it functions well, is non-violent. People uh, living together uh, invent ways of compromising with each other. They do not draw the sword. They do not uh, use the gun to resolve their differences. A civil society is also, uh, by definition, a space in which there is a minimum of self-awareness 
among the actors uh, of that society. Uh, this is a complicated idea in which um, there is a kind of breakdown of habits, of customs. There is an awareness, in other words, that traditions are malleable, they, they can be changed, that customs are contingent, that are forms of life in everyday uh, living and institutions of that civil society are transformable. So there is, by definition, a measure of self-reflexivity, as the philosophers and sociologists might say, uh, when one speaks about a civil society. This is not to say that all actors in a civil society are fully comprehensive, the uh, comprehending of their circumstances, uh, that they know everything, that they, it's as if they sit on a mountain and look over uh, the whole of that civil society. No, but there is, um, there is a measure of self-awareness, which means that a civil society acts um, in all of its dynamism and complexity, in all of the creative chaos, it acts with a certain measure of understanding of its own uh, contingency. We can uh, discuss this. Fear is reduced in a civil society, not eliminated entirely, but fear becomes um, uh, expendable from civil society. It is a space of mutual interaction, of mutuality, of solidarity, uh, and a civil society contains within it, we should discuss it, a multiplicity of mechanisms for resolving conflicts among uh, people uh, who do not agree uh, about life, uh, whose interests are often conflicting, trade unions versus uh, entrepreneurs, for example, um, believers in Catholicism versus uh, Islamists, for instance, in any civil society. These kinds of conflicts are normal and the most successful civil societies are those which invent mechanisms for resolving these kinds of uh, conflicts. This roughly is uh, the meaning, uh, a kind of ideal typical, as Max Weber would say, a kind of ideal typical understanding of this uh, key phrase. Highly generalized, but to repeat, a civil society seen in this way is a complex space of mutual interactions of institutions, networks, uh, uh, activities, of a variety of people in a variety of settings, a measure of nonviolent, self-aware um, solidarity, uh, all at a distance, so to say, uh, from, gov the, from the reach of uh, governments. Now, of course, um, the question becomes, and I would like to say something about this second matter before I stop and before we uh, begin our discussion. The question arises as to why this concept, this phrase uh, underwent a renaissance some 40 years ago and did so globally. Uh, of course, the phrase uh, had a kind of descriptive power to it. It, 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 it. It's a phrase that was used by many to describe the novel uh, developments of this period in which we are still living. For example, um, the efforts uh, of citizens to weaken and bring down dictatorship, for example, in uh, Spanish America or in South Africa. The term clearly had a descriptive purchase when uh, analyzing what was called the new social movements. I mean, the rebirth of the women's movement, uh, the, the, the birth for the first time in the history of modern uh, democracies of a green 
uh, movement that began sometime in the 1960s and gave birth later to green political parties and to a whole myriad of new institutions. Um, this was a period in which, in other words, uh, a certain greening of civil society for the first time uh, took uh, place. Um, obviously, there were major events that this, descriptively speaking, that this phrase civil society addressed. Uh, in my lifetime, probably the most dramatic at the beginning was the birth of an independent uh, trade union movement in uh, Poland, uh, known as Solidarność. And as you know, for some 14 months within the Soviet Empire, uh, Solidarność uh, survived and it managed to uh, to win certain victories for freedom of the press, uh, for no imprisonment of uh, uh, trade union activists and and so on. Um, this uh, descriptive power of sociedad civil is, I think, also uh, understandable in terms of the refusal, a very early refusal of neoliberalism. I mean, if neoliberalism uh, means the privatization of public uh, services and organizations, the marketization of life, uh, the encouragement of the ethic of possessive individualism, then the champions of civil society already during the 1980s, and I would say until today, insist that there is such a thing as society. I mean, this sounds uh, almost um, too elementary, but remember, if you look at, for example, the writings of Friedrich von Hayek, uh, the Austrian champion of what came to be called neoliberalism, von Hayek um, famously claimed that there's no such thing as society. This was repeated by Mrs. Thatcher uh, in Britain. Well, the champions of Sociedad Civil pointed out that there is such a thing as civil society. Uh, again, Ralph Darendorf uh, referred to homo sociologicus uh, to, to point out the what should be obvious that we are all beings who are entangled in language, uh, who are dependent upon households, uh, who have connections um, through our places of employment, uh, through local shops. Uh, we may visit um, mosques and churches and so on. I mean, we are all interconnected uh, by these threads, social threads. This, um, in other words, uh, the phrase civil society, Sociedad Civil, became uh, a critique of methodological individualism. No doubt um, in this uh, period, and I would say continuing until today, there is a certain strategic, not just descriptive, but strategic importance of uh, the language of uh, Sociedad Civil. By that I mean that um, during the last uh, decades, there has been a growing understanding that a tr transition from dictatorship or a transition from Soviet type regimes to a political order where there is openness, accountability, uh, where there is respect for pluralism, nonviolent pluralism, there is an understanding that that transition must involve the building of a civil society. And this had implications. Uh, it's very important, uh, I believe, for the way we think about poder or fuerza, power, because this paradigm shift, this switch to the language of civil society, and civil society thinking emphasized uh, that power is not just up above. Power is not just in the hands of 
armies and police forces and government executives and parliaments and government bureaucracies. This is one form of power. But according to the civil society perspective that I'm describing, power also comes from below. Power is omnipresent. Power relations are, if you like, embedded within everyday uh, interactions in the relationship uh, between partners, lovers, uh, the relationship between adults and children, uh, the relationship within that you have within uh, everyday life and wider communities. All of these relations are steeped, shaped, um, uh, uh, defined, so to say, by power relations. And the implication here, strategically, of the language of civil society is that civil society um, uh, gives a kind of uh, la potencia. Uh, it, it enables people to see that however powerless they feel when trying to think about macro institutions, they can change things from below. Uh, Václav Havel, whom uh, Armando mentioned and about whom I wrote and met uh, many times, liked to say that the birth of a civil society requires living in truth. And by that he, he meant that individuals in their relations with others could actually transform themselves. They do transform themselves. They can live lives of integrity, of honesty, of, of commitment to certain values and to do so openly, uh, not to lie, not to cheat, uh, not to bullshit. Uh, so the civil society paradigm, the civil society way of thinking and acting encourages uh, people to see that they have this uh, potentia, this capacity uh, to transform their uh, circumstances. And then finally, a key reason why I think the Renaissance happened, I've talked descriptively, I've spoken about the strategic advantages of sociedad civile. There are also normative uh, advantages of this uh, phrase. Civil society during the past four decades also has become a normative ideal, something like um, a pragmatic utopia if I could put those words uh, before you. What I mean by this is that to speak of a civil society is to speak positively about um, a plurality of norms, of ethics, of ways of living. To put it simply, uh, if you are a friend of civil society, then you are a champion of the principle of live and let live. Um, a civil society is a complex space of associations, networks, uh, organizations, ways of everyday living, in which there is a certain toleration of difference. The right to be different uh, is an important ethical component of the language of civil society. And seen in this way, uh, the normative advantage of a civil society is that it creates spaces, multiple spaces, in which people can pursue uh, their being in the world. Uh, Ernest Gellner, uh, one of the, the great anthropologists of the 20th uh, century and also philosophers, uh, liked to say that when a civil society functions well, it provides many independent ladders for people to climb. Uh, by that he meant that, you know, the, the sense of being in the world can be enhanced. The sense of dignity can be improved. Uh, there can be a flourishing 
of uh, satisfaction and happiness when a civil society enables, for example, someone to get involved in a sports club uh, where their children are uh, playing sport and to play some kind of leadership role, or that a small business person uh, can set up a shop uh, or perhaps a network of shops. Uh, it gives them uh, dignity in uh, the world. Uh, I could multiply the examples, but I hope that you get the point. And finally, I think from a normative uh, perspective, what's been very interesting about this language of civil society is that it has, uh, for the first time, it has had a very big impact on the way we think about um, democracy. democracy. Uh, what do I mean here? Well, uh, in my own work, I tried uh, for most of my um, career and calling, I tried to build the category of civil society into the very notion of democracy. And I believe that it has had transformative effects, with the help of others, of course, uh, in the way we understand democracy. So. From the perspective of civil society, democracy is not just uh, free and fair elections. Uh, it certainly is compatible with the principle of free and fair elections. Democracy is much more than that. It is about pluralism, the defense of the right to be different, uh, the restraint of governmental power, uh, the refusal of arbitrary power. It is, uh, it, it follows that democracy comes to mean something different than the old view, the classical view, going back to the ancient Greek world, for example, and a view that is used by every populist, in every historical period of democracy. When you speak of civil society, you refuse the simple minded understanding of democracy as the rule of the sovereign people. Uh, what I've tried to do in my work is to show that this sovereign people principle is extremely dangerous for democracy. It has been used repeatedly by demagogues. And However, by contrast, when one speaks about democracy and civil society, there is built in to the notion of democracy uh, the, the, the understanding that the sovereign people principle is metaphysical. That is to say, there is no such thing as a sovereign people. There are people flesh and blood people in all of their diversity, with their different dialects, with their different modes of dress, with their different tastes, with their different um, class interests. Uh, but um, the warning is that a democracy, a democracy is a political system, a way of life, a whole way of life in which there is respect for pluralism, in which there is respect for the principles of humility and uh, diversity. Well, this is already quite a lot. What I propose, uh, Leonardo uh, e Armando, is uh, to stop uh, and perhaps we can talk about these opening thoughts where I have tried to define uh, at the general level what Sociedad Civil means and why um, it is important both descriptively, uh, strategically, and also uh, ethically. I hope this is enough to uh, stir up some discussion. So I will mute myself. Professor, uh, Professor King, King, I would now like to say goodbye to users who have joined us through social uh, media. We will now move on to a private discussion. 
it's a pleasure to have uh, such an important intellectual among us and it's very important for us in cuba to understand civil society it's a very important concept for us and for our understanding of activism and academia I would like to say goodbye to those who joined us through social media and invite them to join us next week.